everybody, Eva here. Hope you are having a great day and a fantastic week. Just give me a quick second while I share this video into the Facebook group. Um, we are talking today all about the spring forward time change, which uh, in Toronto is and many other parts of North America is coming up this Sunday. So this Sunday, all the clocks are being uh, are being set forward by an hour. So I know this is always a really stressful time of year for parents of babies and little ones who probably have their sleep all sorted out. Um, and then they're wondering, oh gosh, what do I do now? Now that I have my kid on such a good schedule and the clocks are going to go forward and everything is going to get messed up. So what do I do? So before we talk about I guess the do's and don'ts of spring forward time change. Just give me a quick second while I share this in to my group and then I will be right with you. So hold on a second here, share, okay. Um, hold on, group, there we are. Okay. All right. So here's the good news, folks. The good news is that the spring forward time change is definitely, without a doubt, the much less evil time change of the two. Because your baby's 6.30 a.m. wake up, for example, suddenly becomes 7.30 right? As opposed to with fall back, your baby's 6.30 a.m. wake up becomes 5.30. That is way more evil. So even though it can definitely be annoying, especially for the, the type A parents here that have finally gotten their little one sleep all sorted out and then their schedules are about to change, the good news is that they're about to go, it's about to go later as opposed to earlier. So here's what you can do. One option here is that you can do absolutely nothing. In that, if let's say you have your little one waking up a little bit earlier than you would like, or maybe a lot earlier than you would like, you don't have to do anything in that you can allow the beauty of the spring forward time change to literally allow your little one's schedule to shift by an hour later. So that would mean that your baby's 5.30 a.m. wake up suddenly becomes 6.30. And so that would mean that if your little one is waking up really early, usually let's say around 5.30, and then typically takes a really early morning nap at let's say 8 or 8.30, depending on the age of your baby, allow that morning nap to naturally become a 9 to 9.30 a.m. nap, which isn't so early after all. And then allow the next nap, if your baby is taking a few naps a day, you know, allow each of those naps to get later, and then allow bedtime to naturally be an hour later. And then before you know it, assuming your baby's got a good schedule, he's just maybe stuck in the wrong time zone, allow the beauty of this spring forward time change to just shift everything later for you. But the only way this is going to work is if the entire schedule shifts later. Otherwise, um, you'll just go back to the way things were before very, very quickly. Now, the for the rest of us who maybe like the way our babies or our toddlers schedules are right now, we don't want things changing. Um, I'll tell you what I like to do. You know, some people, they like to maybe spend the week before this the, the time change prepping their baby. So, you know, maybe for spring forward, they would be very gradually pushing their little one's schedules earlier and earlier every week in preparation for the time change. It's too stressful for me. I never did it with my kids. I couldn't be bothered. You know, half the time it doesn't work anyways. You know, they're still going to wake up when they feel like waking up. And so, and plus on top of that, as we just established, your little one's schedule is going to get later, not earlier. So what I've always done with my kids and what I always suggest uh, people to do is just allow Sunday morning's going to come. Right. And your babe, your little ones, let's say 630 a.m. wake up is now going to suddenly be 730. Right. So what you can do Sunday morning is wake your little one up at, let's say, seven o'clock new time right, which would be 6 a.m. old time. 
So it is a little bit late on the new schedule. It's a little bit later than usual, but you know, it's a little bit earlier. So he's getting 30 minutes less sleep. And then from there, you can do naps a little bit earlier and then you can push bedtime a little bit earlier. And then the following morning, if he's usually waking up at 6.30 for the day, he woke up at 7 a.m. yesterday, wake him up at 6.30 a.m. the next morning. And so really all you have to do to get your little one back onto their schedule is just begin waking them up earlier and earlier by 15 to 30 minute increments every day or every other day. And then within a few days, you know, maybe, maybe closer to a week, their schedule should be back to normal. Now, for those of you who've got your little ones in daycare who are still napping, um, the good news is that the daycare's nap schedule is not going to change. You know, if your toddler takes one nap at 1230 every single day, then guess what? He's going to go down for his nap at 1230 no matter what. And so being in daycare, I find, can actually really help expedite this process in terms of getting your little one back onto their schedule. So, um that's, that's the good news about daycare. Now, for those of you who've got um, little ones that are maybe a little bit older that um, maybe aren't napping anymore, like my kids, you know, what I always like to do on sp the spring forward time change with my kids now that, um, now that they're not napping is I make sure to plan a, a really jam-packed day with tons and tons of activity because I don't want my kids, my kids usually go to bed for 7.30 every night, my six-year-olds and my four-year-olds, and I don't want them up until 8.30, 9 o'clock new time. You know, I want them tired. I want them back on their schedule, and I want them tired when, you know, they, they need to be tired. And so I always make sure to really to plan tons of physical activity, tons of stimulation, you know, tons of running around, maybe that, you know, that means a full day of outings so that by the time 7.30, maybe 8 o'clock new time comes around, they're legitimately ready to go to sleep because they've had such a jam-packed day. So to sum up, your, you know, your, your choices are for the parents of early risers, you can just allow the beauty of the time change to your, allow your baby's schedule to get later by an hour automatically without having to do any work. And uh, for those of you who don't want that, who want your little one back on their normal schedule, just wake them up a little bit earlier every single day, get them down for their naps a little bit earlier so that once the time change hits, it, what is what I mean, so that, you know, within a few days they're back on their schedule. But as I said, if your little one's in daycare, that's going to really expedite the process because their nap schedule is set in stone there and um, if they're if they're napping from let's say 12 30 to 3 and your little one usually goes down for the night by 7 30 he'll be tired by 7 30 on Monday or Tuesday so still nevertheless give it a little bit of time it's not going to be um, it's not going to be a change that your little ones are going to adjust to overnight necessarily sometimes they might sometimes it might not it, that might not be the case so you know give it at least a few days but um, it's remember, it's not nearly as evil as the fallback change. So you should be just fine. I mean, the consequences of this time change are that everything gets later, not earlier. So um, it could be worse. We'll talk in much more detail come November about what to do during fallback because that one is way, way, way more evil. Perfect, wonderful. I hope this was helpful and that you all have a great day and a wonderful weekend. Sorry, not a weekend. It's only Tuesday. Sorry, I'm used to going on Facebook Live on Friday. I hope you guys all have a fantastic, wonderful week. Take care. Bye-bye.